All right, so let's start talking about Splunk. Let me close my other tabs. All right, so here, what's going on is I have made a public server that you can use. You don't need to install anything. All you need is a web browser. I got a public server running Splunk. There's two of them. So you open one of these links, they're both the same, and it opens a window and you need a name and password. The name and password are both student one. The only purpose of that is to stop automated attacks from trashing my server so much. So student one and student one. All right, and once you get into Splunk, uh, I guess I'll save that, that would be fine. All right. It's loading a little slowly over my network, but here we go. Okay, once you're in Splunk, there are a bunch of add-ons in this Splunk, but the only thing we need is search and reporting, which is always there by default. Okay. And what you see here, um, Splunk has about a million events. These are log entries from all kinds of devices. They're all from six years ago because we're using a data set prepared by Splunk that include, what they did was they set up some Amazon servers and made a real company network with an email server and a domain controller and other devices. And then they ran a bunch of attacks to attack it. And they recorded all the log data from all that. And they gave it as a free data set so people can practice learning Splunk. And that's what we're going to do. So we're looking at all these archived events. And you can see a summary of the type of data here. And Splunk is incredibly easy to use in principle. It's just Google for log data. The only difficulty is that log data itself is kind of a mess. Here's a list of the hosts that it collected data from, which is not very informative. Things like uh, a number starting with WE and a number, some kind of name of a server, uh, IP addresses, and so on. It's more informative to look at source types. Here you see uh, interesting types to look at. When Windows event logs are here, those are just, as you would imagine, the raw Windows event logs, the system security, and uh, the other law application logs on Windows machines. Here's registry events recorded from Windows, and here's Sysmon, which we'll talk more about later. Sysmon is a Microsoft product you can add to Windows machines that creates much more useful event logs. The, de the original event logs create hundreds of events for the simplest activity, like opening a folder, and the Sysmon event logs give you nice, concise information about important events like launching a process, creating a file, creating and deleting a registry key, nice, easily understood events. Then there are 40 gate events. This network has a 40 gate firewall and it is recording what it sees. There's an IIS web server, make this bigger. Uh, so it's got log from the IIS Microsoft web server. Um, there are stream records. These are records where Splunk is monitoring the network traffic directly. Now it does not store entire PCAP files. It stores just a summary of the data flows, much like the Cisco product NetFlow. So you get a, a summary of DNS traffic, HTTP traffic and other protocols. And you have Suricata. Suricata is an open source intrusion detection system. So it monitors network traffic and it detects suspicious traffic and logs it by the name of the threat it has detected. So those are the types of data we have, and you can search them all. The problem is, of course, that they don't all agree in what the name of a field is, like an IP address or a domain name. So it's a little complicated. And that's why the description of Splunk is Google for log data is very good because Google has the same problem. There are billions of web pages and they don't, they aren't organized in any way. So some might have useful information on one part of the page and some on another part of the page, and you have to find it anyway. So that's a summary of the data. And so let's take a look at uh, this one. And typically when you're using Splunk, you'd use an enterprise system and you have many servers and many locations. And so you'd define indexes to specify what data you're using. Now here, 
all this data, all the archive data is just one index and it's called botch V1 for Splunk's name for this stuff, boss of the sock version one. But anyway, if you put that in, you can search the data in the index and you will find nothing. And the reason you find nothing is because all that data is six years old. And by default, Splunk only looks in the last 24 hours. So you have to go to the time and change it to all time. Now, when I search, it's going to take some time to do this. And kind of slow. And uh, it's going. See, events are 25,000, but I know it will be a million. So I'm going to speed it up by turning on event sampling. This is how you speed up slow queries. Change it to 1 to 100 event sampling, and it will run much faster. Now you see a timeline appearing. Here's 3,000 events, 5,000 events. Uh, this is a timeline, which is clickable, by the way, if you want to restrict yourself to a certain period of time. And it's done. It only took maybe 10 seconds to do that query. It has found 9,000 events because there really are 900,000. And it's only showing me 1% of them. So this is one way to use Splunk. You can look at the log events one by one. Here is a log event from a uh, system provider name. This is from Sysmon. And so it's got some information here about something, a process launching or something. Here's another one from Sysmon. And you can look at events one by one here, but this is really an inefficient way to use Splunk. Um, what's better is to use these things here that let you look for certain fields and sort things into certain categories. Like here you can see there's a client IP address. And if I click that, I'll see that there are four IP addresses here. And here's the count of events coming from that IP address. And I could investigate these in this manner. So let me, um, that just shows all the log data, which is just a confused mess with far too much information. So we need to um, narrow it down. Now we talked about these source types. Let's look at stream HTTP events. So I want to use, um, I could type this in, but if I don't want to type it in, I can use the mouse. If I go to the source type box. So I can go back to um, the default search page. This might do that, yeah. And I can go back to my data summary. And here I can choose to look at stream HTTP just right off this list. And there it is. All right, now I'm gonna see the stream HTTP data. I do have to go back to all time. All right. And now I'm gonna turn on event. Uh, maybe I'll just leave it go. I don't might not need event sampling for yep just 24,000 http events all right now these are somewhat easier to understand because http is a familiar protocol and here's the logs so here's the destination ip address some time here's the site here's somebody going to my site sd.samsclass.info so that's modern data some trunk shows you the most recent data first but here i need the old data so i'm going to put in that um index to get rid of the new data. I want the archive data. And so some students have been messing with this machine index, which happens. If I use the index equal box V1, then it will only show me the archive data without any recent events added. All right. Yep, now I'm only seeing data from 2016, which is the data that we want to analyze. All right, and here you see this looks like uh, a web page from Microsoft in some kind of zipped format. Um, here's HTTP headers, 200 OK, and so on. So this is web requests. Here's a get request. It's a loaded web page. And then a response. And if I look down here a bit, I should find some obvious attack traffic before hunting too far. Um, and if I don't, then I will get rid of the filter. Actually, I did already did get rid of the filter. So let me just see. Um, let me go back to my instructions. I expected to see a 
vulnerability scanner here, 93705. All right, that's right. In order to see it, I'm going to add this. The name of the web server that they're using at this company, they named it after, they modeled this scenario after a Batman movie, is I'm really not Batman.com. So that is the web server run at this company. Now you can, you notice the way this query is set up. It has index equals botch v1, source type equals stream HTTP. This is the fastest, most efficient way to use Splunk is name a field and give that field a specific value. But you can also use it just the way you use Google like this, just put in a word, and then it will just look for that word anywhere in the log entry. It's slower, it uses more server time, but it's easier to understand. So I often do searches this way. So it's just gonna find events that are HTTP and that have that domain in them anywhere. And in practice, those will be the requests for this web page, the web page of this company. And so here it tells me some document has moved and that's source headers. Here it tells me this is a 303 redirect. All right. And this is what I was looking for. Here is a post. Okay. Um, this is a post to a Joomla server. And notice down here, user agent is Mozilla, which is normal. And then there are extra headers in the HTTP request, Acunetics, scanning. What's going on here is attackers have scanned my web server looking for vulnerabilities, oh. and they've used the Acunetics commercial web scanner, and the Acunetics vuln scanner by default adds these extra marks to every request, so you'll know this is a vulnerability scan. And therefore, you now know this is an attacker. They're using this scanner to find vulnerabilities on you. You know their IP address is gonna be, this is the IP address of the web server here. And the IP address of the attacker is here, the client IP. So you know several things about a suspicious activity in progress already. And that is enough to find the first several flags here. Uh, the scanner name is a flag, the attacker, the web server IP. All right. And let me show you um, how to find the defacement file name. This is where you begin to see the power of Splunk. So now, um, if I take these events and look at the client IP address, which should be up here, their client IP. All right, I see that there are some addresses uh, from this addition, I think the attacker, then there's someone else that came in. All right, but notice the web address, the IP address of the web server I just pointed out was here. Let me find one from the Acunetric scanner. Okay, here's an event from the Acunetric scanner. So this is going from the attacker to the web server. The web server's address is therefore here, 192 ending in 70. I'm gonna copy that. Okay, now, if I go to look for an HTTP event with the client IP, I can click any one of these and I'll see the events coming from that client IP. And I don't care about this IP, I care about the format. I want to find events where the web server was a client. Now this should never happen on a proper network, a network with proper traffic control. A server is only allowed to be a server, never a client. So you don't open a browser on your web server and download things. There's two reasons not to do that. The first thing is you could download malware and infect your server. And the second and more important reason is this is what attackers will do. If they gain the ability to execute code on your web server, they will try to execute a reverse shell. They will try to make a network connection outward from that server to a command and control server. And you don't want to allow that. Your web server should never initiate a connection going out. It should only respond to requests coming in. So if I see any traffic coming from my web server with the web server as the client address, that traffic is going backwards through the network. And that shouldn't ever happen. Now, you're going to get zero events here, but that's because I left in this I'm really not Batman.com name. If the web server itself is serving I'm really not Batman.com, then it's not going to be going somewhere else to load that page. It would be loading a different page. So I have to get rid of that word. 
Now I'm looking for any HTTP requests that originated from the web server, which is traffic going backwards through the network. And there are a few of those. And these are suspicious events. And you see there's nine such events. So you can just look at them one by one. And you can see this one is loading some kind of binary content. And if you look down here, you will find that one of them is loading an image, which was downloaded to deface the web server. So in fact, I see it right here, a file name of an image, poison ivy is coming for you and so on. And you can see the domain name it loaded it from, this strange domain name on a strange port. So those are some more flags to find. And that's the first attack. You found there was a scanner. And then somehow, we haven't figured out how yet, the attackers were able to gain control of the web server and make it download a file. And you find a few flags that way. So I'm going to stop this video and let people get started doing that stuff.